We're back. This is KO Corner. Like I said, we're going to be hitting you more frequently. Um, you have to pardon me this week because I'm a little hoarse. Due to um, the going going on on Thursday, Thursday night with um, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Godgers, or Goat Rodgers, we call him, with the historic Hail Mary. Um, yeah, my voice still hasn't bounced back from that. And Danny Jacobs took the, the last I had left in me uh, with that fight. We're going to address that too. Um, last week, we weren't able to come to you for um, various reasons, but it was a holiday. But um, huge developments in the heavyweight division. Um, most people saw it. Tyson Fury versus Vladimir Klitschko. Going into this fight, I had a 50-50. To be honest with you, and I'm a Vladimir Stam Klitschko stand, but I had a 50-50 due to the fact Tyson has movement. Tyson is tough, and he has movement that he can actually box. That's the thing, and he has more movement than most opponents that Vladimir has faced within the last couple, last few years. So I saw it being 50-50, um, but... It was a lopsided victory. Um, Vladimir did not let his hands go any. It was like he was timid, or afraid to throw a big shot or open. It. He wasn't throwing the right hand or anything. And Tyson put constant movement on him to the point he was even clowning him and even punking him after rounds. He would bump into him. He just totally took Vladimir's will, I think. He broke him in fight, pre-fight maybe, and it was just too much. Like I said, it combined with the movement. And it was later on into this fight, he even hit Vladimir with a big shot. And when Vladimir gets hit with shots like that, he he knows what he doesn't know what to do still. He threw his hands up in the air like a woman basically and just clenched and I already knew, I knew then it was it was over. But like I said, I was shocked Vladimir didn't even try to get off the hook or the right hand or anything. It was just like he was caught he fought cautious the whole fight. Um but well-deserved victory for Tyson. Those who know me know I've been ta- been following Tyson for years. I'm a huge fan of his. He's 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 hilarious. He's great for boxing. Boxing is in great hands. This dude is great, and I'm glad now Americans finally get to see what we've been seeing as diehard boxing fans for years now with Tyson. Great personality. Um, it's going to be a rematch. The rematch I think is going to go a little differently. I predict if Vladimir does throw his hands, if he presses the action, that he's aggressive, knowing this is his last chance, I think he'll knock Tyson out in five rounds, or, five rounds or less. That's if he starts throwing his hands. On the flip side of that, it's a thirty percent. I, I think it's seventy thirty. It's a thirty percent chance that if Tyson hits him with a bomb coming in, Vladimir's going to get timid again, and Tyson's going to hurt him, and he might, might end the fight, or uh, have Vladimir fighting cautiously the rest of the fight, but. I think Vladimir is going to end the fight early. Um, next, we're going to have to address the the Peter Quillen and Danny Jacobs, the Miracle Man fight. I missed the Algeri fight. Um, this is going to be a two-part KO corner, so I'll let um, Abraham and Kirk finish the next one. But I predict I predicted this before the fight. Multiple people. Me, Lad Clap, and JJ01. Shout out to JJ01. We literally predicted this before the fight. I've been watching. I predicted five fights ago. I said Kid Chocolate is going to get knocked out brutally because his defense is non existent and his balance is terrible and he has no strength in his legs. He leaves himself susceptible to getting hit with so many shots when he throws the shot and even when he's backing up, he leaves his chin out. And I saw this. I forgot who he was fighting five fights ago. The guy he beat was totally outclassed, but he still hit him with some shots. I'm looking like somebody who knows what they're doing, they're going to hurt him. And then he gets dropped by Andy Lee. And coming to the Jacobs fight, it was it was funny hearing people talk about Kid Chocolate as the puncher. I'm looking like, you don't watch Danny Jacobs? But early into the fight, I saw, Dan, I saw, I saw the look in Danny's eye like he was going to try to end him. And when he got hit, man, he just didn't know. When he got hit the first time, and he basically folded up a little bit, I said, "Oh, he's not gonna be able to deal with Danny's power." I saw it going. I saw it going no more than three rounds. I thought he was gonna actually escape the first round, but get knocked get knocked out in the second and stopped in the third. But he didn't even make it to the third. Man, I w- I was shocked. He just blasted through, dude. And if there's a rematch, he's gonna blast through him again. Um, I don't see. 
anything Quillen can do to, unless he, even if he does land a big shot on Danny and Danny goes down, Danny's the type of dude who will get up and die in the ring. You know, I don't see anybody just stopping Danny like that at this point in his life. Like he said, the dude's going to have to kill me in the ring. He really goes into the fight believing that. I don't think Peter Quillen does. Um, and it, it, I didn't want to see either of the brothers fight, man. I love them both. You know, I'm a huge, obviously I'm a huge Danny fan, more so than anything. But I, I like Kid Chocolate too, man. And I love to watch him fight. And I didn't want, I didn't want to see those two clash this soon. You know, I didn't want to see him. Just like I didn't want to see Broner and, and Porter fight this early. But Al Heyman makes big fights, so that's what boxing fans wanted. I just didn't want to see them two fight this early. But Danny's finally going to get the respect that I felt he deserved years ago. Not only is he a great story, but he's a good fighter and tremendous hearts and will. I mean, just tremendous punch and power and talent, man. Like I said, I've been a fan of his for year when he, years, years ago when he had the thick braids and before his grandmother passed. And he took the fight he shouldn't have and got KO. But Danny, Danny was always, Danny has always been a beast, man. And I love dude, man. But this is the first one. The second one is going to be a follow-up on the controversial decision with Miguel Cotto and Saul Alvarez. A lot of people are still talking about that fight and how it was scored and who actually won. You know, it's it's it's, it's a large divide. But, um, we'll address that and. Like I said, we're back and just hitting you with this one. Peace and shouts out to everyone. All right.